Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create the line following program that we discussed in the last video. And in the last video, we talked about a lot of the math that goes behind this. So I suggest that if you haven't seen the last video, you go and watch that and then come back and watch this one. So remember that in the last video, we're going to repeat the steps over and over again. So we're going to start with our loop. All line following programs end up being in a loop. Okay. Now we need somewhere to hold our error variable. Okay, so this is when you switch over to the complete palette, no longer in the common palette, the complete palette, and we're going to define a variable. So you go to edit, define variables. You're going to create a new number variable, and you're going to call it error, a very descriptive name. Okay, you close that. Now we're going to make sure error starts off at zero. That's just an assumption that we can make to make things easier on the program. So we can write to that value, write zero to error. Okay. So now what we do is we have a move block in here. We have two move blocks actually. One for C and one for B. And they're both unlimited duration. Okay, we don't worry about the power level on these because we're going to set those using the data wires below. Okay, so what we do is we take, we, we're going to set error equal to something, so we pull out another variable block. We're going to write to error the threshold minus the current light sensor value. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to code the th threshold in. So what we're going to do is take the sensor block here that I got from the sensor palette, sensor over, and we're going to take the intensity and plug it into this math block. Okay, The math block, we're going to make it subtract, and we're actually going to say um, our threshold, which is going to be 50, minus whatever intensity we plugged in here, and we're going to put that in error. So this value is in here. 50 minus this value goes into error. So that's where we get our threshold. What it's supposed to, what it's supposed to be minus what it actually is. So here I'm going to say threshold is 50. So we can remember that. So put that under that block. OK, so now what we do is we take error and really we didn't need to declare the error variable here because we could have just used data wires all the way through but it's a bit more clear when you actually define the variable what you're doing with stuff okay so you're going to read from the error variable multiply it by our kp which is a constant, and really what you're going to want to do is this constant is determined a bit by trial and error, and you're going to typically end up with a value that's going to be less than 1, and I'm going to say 0.3 for right now. And what happens is I test that out. If the line follower doesn't update fast enough, like it just strays off the line, then I increase this constant, and if I go bouncing back and forth really fast, then I decrease this constant, okay? So really you can think about this as if it's how fast you get back to the line, okay? The bigger it is, the faster you get back to the line. You want this as small as possible, but still following the line. So we now have our error times kp, and we remember that what we want to do is add it to our target value, which we're going to set at 50. Eh, we'll set it at 40 for right now. For this motor. And we're going to, actually, to be consistent, plug it in there. So 40 plus whatever error times kp is, is going to be C's power level. And then 40 minus 
whatever KP's value is, is going to be B's power level. So that's going to be our program. Notice that there's no um, stopping of the motors. So that's because they do this automatically. Their power level is adjusted in the program. So now I'm going to show you what this looks like when you actually run it and after I tune KP to be a value that's actually suitable for my robot. Because this value will change based on your robot, based on the type of line you're following, how straight it is. This you really have to play with to make sure it's right for your situation. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what this looks like on a robot.